speaking to Tony Luca Torto from Vision Research. Vision Research are the company that make the world famous Phantom cameras, which are renowned for the high speed work. I want to get a bit of history about how the Phantom cameras have come about because they are regarded as the best in high speed photography. At Vision Research, we manufacture a, a broad range of, of high speed cameras that cover all kinds of applications from industrial, scientific, uh, to military and um, automotive, that kind of stuff. I focus on our cinema product line, uh, which we introduced in 2007 with the Phantom HD. That's a camera that did 1,000 frames per second at 2K resolution. Uh, we also came out with the 65, which was a 4K camera at that time that went up to 140 frames per second. Our cinema product line has really evolved since then. We're here today at the show introducing our latest camera, which is the Phantom Flex 4K here. Okay, now 4K. Tell me about why we need a 4K camera for high-speed work. I mean, I'm aware of the increased resolution, but is it really for the big screen? Is it for other reasons? We're designing this camera for the cinema industry, so it is really for the big screen. Our cameras are also used a lot for special effects work, and really the more resolution, the better for, for that kind of work. Uh, so, you know, so far we've gotten a lot of feedback from visual effects artists that are really excited about this camera for the high speed uh, for that kind of work. And let me ask you, these cameras, even though they're known for being high speed cameras, they can be used as a camera that doesn't do high speed as well. That's true of the Phantom Plex 4K more than any of our uh, previous products. Um, the, everything with this camera revolved around the image quality. It has the absolute lowest noise and the highest dynamic range of any of our previous cameras and um, you know with that we think that you know the camera can be used at lower speeds at standard speeds uh, to capture the entire you know the entire project. I know there's other high-speed cameras out there but I also know that the Phantoms are regarded as basically top of the line of the high speed. What is it that makes these so good? I think that we pay attention to this industry and we have a lot of features in our cameras that are production friendly. Uh, we have on-camera controls, for example. Uh, the Phantom Flex 4K really has a full featured on-camera control interface, so you don't need to tether it to a laptop to control over software anymore. Uh, we also have built-in battery capabilities. You know, above all, it's really all about the image and the workflow. You can get the raw files from our camera off in about one gigapixel per second, uh, which makes the um, you know the workflow a lot faster uh, for offloading the traditionally very large files that are associated with high-speed imaging. And what sort of duration can you record? I know that it's limited duration when you're blasting off tremendous frame rates. And in with this question, tell me the frame rates that you can go up to as well. The camera can go up to a thousand frames per second at 4K resolution. Uh, with a 64 gigabyte camera, that equals about a five second recording duration, and the playback uh, ends up being about three minutes from that. At 2K resolution, the camera can go up to 2,000 frames per second, and the lower you go with the resolution vertically, the higher the frame rate can be, and uh, the more you know, the more frames that the camera shoots, the longer the playback duration is. Uh, that's basically how a, a high speed camera works. Sure. It's light years away from the days of doing high speed on film. I can't imagine that film is used a great deal for high speed work these days, or am I wrong with that? Uh, you still see them every once in a while. Uh, one of the biggest advantages of a digital high speed camera is the um, instant playback functionality. So you can really see what you captured right away. As soon as the camera's triggered, you can preview the slow motion playback from the camera instantly choose the position that you want to save and then save that off to the camera's built-in um, removable flash drives. Uh, with the Phantom Flex 4K, there's a two terabyte uh, solid state flash drive, uh, which is manufactured and designed by Vision Research for the absolute fastest transfer speeds possible. When you're recording, does it record on a loop, that five seconds, and then, and then you decide which way you want to take it out of? Yes, yeah, when you're recording in the, the high speed mode in our cameras, um, it's the same as any high speed camera. Uh, it's a loop mode that's continuously recording until you tell it to stop with the trigger point. Uh, once you trigger it, then you can play it back right away, preview, and then you know save the, the portion that you want. 
Um, you can also, you know, save up to, um, you know, about 120 frames per second with this directly to the the Cine Mag. Uh, the Cine Mag is the flash drive, and you can actually, you know, record for several minutes and at, you know, the lowest frame rates you can record for an hour or more. Uh, directly to that at you know a traditional 24 25 frame per second rate great and tell me about the different models that you've got Fe featured here is actually our entire cinema line so this is a really great display the phantom hd gold was the first camera that we came out with in 2007 that's the camera that does a thousand frames per second at hd resolution the phantom 65 gold is uh, our first 4K camera, uh, which went up to 140 frames per second, so not quite as high speed as the Flex 4K, for example. Uh, the Phantom Flex we introduced in 2010, uh, that does 2,500 frames per second at HD resolution, and that's you know still a very viable camera for the, the higher frame rate, uh, the higher frame rate work. And uh, the Phantom Miro we introduced last year. Uh, that's a small portable system that does 1,500 frames per second at HD resolution. Uh, and then, you know, this is our the latest, which has the the most features, the most production-friendly features, and 4K resolution and the best image quality out of out of any of, from any of our other products. It's definitely an evolving product line. Definitely, yeah. And I think we've really listened to the industry and taken feedback. Um, even earlier this year, we did a preview of the Flex 4K. And uh, we, we previewed that camera at NAB. And we took a lot of feedback from camera users there uh, to, for mechanical changes more than anything. And this is the first time we're showing the production version of this camera where you, know, you, can, you can see that we, that we listen to a lot. We put a lot of mounting positions on the camera, for example. Um, we made our, the CineMag door a lot more robust, so indestructible. <laughs> and, um, the, the menu system, the layout, made it, you know, something that's familiar, something that's able to use right away in production. Speaking to Benjamin Mueller, camera technician based in Munich, Germany. Benjamin, thank you for taking the time. No problem, you're welcome. I want to ask you about using the Phantom high-speed cameras, because I know this is some of the work you do. Tell me, this is a fascinating area. What, what are your thoughts working with the high-speed photography? Well, let's say when I when I began working with the with the cameras, a lot of the work was convincing people that digital high-speed cameras can cope up and, and keep up with the film high-speed cameras that were used at that time. That was like six six seven years ago now, uh, when Vision really started to use those cameras. So I think one one main point for us and still is is really the communication before the shooting getting down to frame rate calculations, record speeds that you want to do, record times, storage space, uh, all of those lighting is a, is a big part obviously of, of all the considerations you have to do uh, before the shooting. While shooting actually, um, the process became way much easier than in the beginning, right? In the beginning there was a lot of uh, bits and pieces missing when you were shooting that are now available like fast saving uh, capabilities, uh, really fast playback in a high quality playback solution so we have all this now so while shooting I'm more in the background uh, helping the DP to maybe help, help him solve some problems uh, explain the camera latitude and all the, all the details he might not be aware of uh, because he's working with normal speed cameras mostly so I'm, I'm kind of a, a bit of link between camera and camera uh, cameraman. Are these difficult cameras to use? Um, Let's say we're working on the on the edge, what is possible technology-wise in a in a camera, in a high-speed camera, right? So there's always the balance for vision and the manufacturer as well to to push to the to the furthest limit without making it too far and non-usable anymore. So usually we, we work with really reliable tools, and we can we can uh, there's there's not it's not really difficult to work with them anymore. The most difficult part is is like in lighting um, and and in the yeah, in the process before shooting, so you're really prepared for all the all the possibilities that can come up. Yeah, so. And when you're filming at extreme high speeds, you need a lot of light. I've seen you guys in action, yeah. and you have it's almost like almost a photography situation where there's a burst of light for those few seconds that you need. I've even been told in the old days you had to wear sunglasses, and it was very hot. Yeah. Talk to me about these things. Yeah, I mean. 
with the sensitivity growing for the cameras, uh, it, 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 it came down a little bit, but still you need like for, let's say a thousand frames, you need like five to six stops more light to get roughly the same aperture that you that you were used to with normal shooting and that can become quite difficult right if you want to have an aperture of five and you need like five stops more to compensate you you need a lot of light still uh, to compensate with that and that's actually uh, you know many cameramen are really used to light and light really well in normal light level conditions but when you come up and you maybe what you used to do with a 1.2k you now do with a 12k that's some different lighting, right? So um, you, you really need experienced people who know how to work with those high light levels. Um, and sunglasses are really common on set. Um, heat is another issue that you have to think of when you when you work with light, especially especially when when we have like food designers or something like this. You know, the melting stuff, the the beer foam forms should, should be should be nice. So yeah, lighting lighting is one of the big things, and usually we. Uh, it's not it's not seldom that we reach the maximum capacity of the studio in terms of in terms of outlet right it, we have some solutions for this now with battery powered lights that buffer and, and give a lot of output uh, from a battery so you don't need the main main big plug but um, still you need a lot of light to work with the cameras and do you get to know all the different frame rates and I don't mean every conceivable frame rate but you know what a hundred frames does you know what 500 a thousand two thousand yeah. and I know you can do up to a thousand at 4k on the latest model two thousand at 2k mm -hmm. so you must get a good understanding of what these different frame rates do yeah um, I mean on one one side it's always it depends a lot on the subject right usually High speed is, is like things you don't see with, with your normal eye. That's what you want to capture with the high speed moment. Um, so mostly it's going to the details and the closer you get to something, the, the, the need becomes higher for higher frame rates because the smaller uh, your subject is, the more frames you need per second to, to show actually what is happening. Right? If you have a wide angle shot, you don't probably work with 300 frames and you have a runner, it's like 450 frames. So you, you, get, to, you get to know the frame rates, but on the other side, it's also you have to consider the playback time. In the end, usually in a commercial high speed shot, might be like one second in earlier times. By now, people get used to it and use it more. So playback time comes down to three seconds, maybe four seconds in the, in the final edit. So that's also some considerations. By now with software, you can speed up and speed down, but there's always an interpolation and always uh, uh, issues happening with this. So we, we tend to have the right, right frame rate right at the start. And also now with 4K in the post-processing, you have to think of the huge amount of data you're, you're having with, with high speed. So shooting a thousand frames is 40 times the, the, the uh, material you have with shooting normal speed. So that's something we have to consider also a lot. Yeah. And do you find a tremendous beauty in the slow motion image, or I should say the high speed frame rate when played back at standard frame rate? Um, I mean, the, the beauty for me is really in the details and in the, in the in the in the small things you usually don't recognize or, or you don't realize before shooting even that this movement is here that this this beauty comes out so very often we're shooting something and by accident something happens in the frame and it's like well that's what we want to get and you didn't see it before and then then it really shows okay that's that's the that's the beauty where you can come in where you also can help as an operator with your experience to come in and say well you know, I, I did something like this before, and when we when we look a little bit different, I think there's a very nice action that 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 is nice in high speed and and good for the frame rate. So um, I think it it helps a lot to have experience, and to play around, to have the possibility to play around, have the live playback, and and look at it, and then find your way and find uh, find the really really nice niche. Because very often it's just it's a, it's small moments that you capture, and then in the end you really see, oh yeah, that's what we wanted. That's the that's the moment that is shining. And how would you feel if you had to go back to work with high-speed photography on film as opposed to digital? Would it be like stepping back into another era? Um, it, it would be a completely different era because the workflow and the work itself has changed a lot. With the high-speed film cameras, there was more of the magic involved, but also more of the uncertainty. Right? So you, you had to develop the film in the next day and then you only could see, did we capture what we have? You could not play around as much. You had to wait for, is it sharp? Because very often you're working with, with very open up aperture, so there's not much uh, depth of field. So it was more, it was, you were more nervous shooting, right? You had to make sure that everything is set up properly. 
and then hope that you capture the moment correctly. Now with this system, you have immediate playback, so it became a completely different workflow and we generate much more material per day than we used to with, with film. Do you ever use these as standard speed cameras? Because I know they can be used in that mm. way. Is it something that people do with the phantom cameras or are they primarily used for the high speed work? Um, that depends really on the, on the field of application where, where they're going with those cameras. For example, we have the, the um, nature guys going out shooting wildlife documentaries, for example. They don't want to carry three or two cameras with them just for normal. And so they do a lot of their work also with normal speeds on those cameras. I think the biggest, biggest compromises that you have to think of is with these cameras, we always have a raw data workflow. So it's a very bulky workflow in the end. Um, you can, you can make your workarounds with this, but that's always something you have to consider compared to a normal speed uh, ENG style camera, for example. Um, so that, that's some of the considerations. Um, the, other, the other part is the dynamic range was not there before the Flex 4K uh, came out now. So we, we're working with 10 stops and latitude, which is fine, but film still, I, we had a lot of people shooting the high speed parts digital and still for the um, for the for the money shots, for the product shots, uh, they still used film just because of the latitude and the, and the beauty and the brilliance of the pictures. So we're really hoping now with the Flex 4K that we enter a new era and make it really usable as a as a whole project camera.